Jennifer, can you keep a secret? A really important family secret? Sure, Aunt Miranda. I mean, if you tell us to. Very well, then. Come on down to the kitchen and meet my brother-in-law, Patrick. Patrick Moss is married to Aunt Miranda's older sister, Joanna. I remember them from one of Aunt Miranda's tea parties. Remember now, you two are sworn to absolute secrecy about this. Once you've heard Patrick's story, I'm sure you can't help but be interested in helping him suss out what happened. You'll need to speak with each of his children, Claire, Darren and Jeff. One of them must be involved unless this is all some kind of misunderstanding. Claire Moss works at Oxford. Jeff Moss is an actor down at Stratford-upon-Avon. And Darren is a cadet at the Tower of London. After you talk to them, we'll meet you in the lobby of the Ritz Hotel. Remember, it's a secret. The year was 1671. A rogue and his lads were running away from the Tower of London down the Tower Wharf. In their coats and boots were stuffed some of the crown jewels of England. The ringleader, called Captain Blood, accidentally dropped a small ruby in his hurry. It fell off the wharf and landed right in the lap of a poor fisherman named William Smith. What went through his mind I do not know. He put the ruby in his pocket rowed his small boat out into the Thames River and calmly went fishing. Meanwhile, the tower guards arrested Captain Blood and his men and recovered the jewels. In all the confusion, nobody missed the little ruby. But William Smith was afraid if he gave it back to the king, he would also be accused of theft. Instead, he eventually gave the ruby to his son. William's son gave it to his son, who gave it to his daughter, who gave it to her son, and so on. Nobody ever sold it. Now I have the ruby drop of Captain Blood, Jennifer. Here it is. Just last week, I told this story to my three children, Claire, Jeff, and Darren, for the first time. One of them will inherit the ruby. But now, listen to what your Aunt Miranda found in the newspaper. Upon his return from London, Mr. Tony of the Tony Studios announced an exciting new movie project. It's a new twist on the Captain Blood story. It's a gem. It will make millions for everyone involved. Mr. Tony declined to say more. I'm afraid that one of my children couldn't resist the temptation and wrote down our family story about Captain Blood and the Ruby. Then he or she sold the story to Mr. Tony, the movie producer, for a great deal of money. I know that after 300 years, the secret of the ruby can no longer hurt our family. But for generations, the moment when parents share the secret with their children has been a moment of trust, a bond between us that ties us together as a family. No one has ever told the secret. No one has ever betrayed the confidence and trust of their parents and all their ancestors through the centuries. I need to know which one of my children could do such a thing. That is why I have come to you for help. There's Darren now with his friend Simon. It's funny. We've met Darren a couple of times. I never would have guessed he knew a secret worth millions of dollars. Hey guys, what's going on? Dead quiet. Even the ravens are behaving themselves today. We were talking about films we've seen. Darren's always bonkers about movies. Spends all his time at the wax museum, staring at those moldy old stars. You seen any good films this summer? Just that one with Amy Jolana. The rest were totally dull. You know, if I had a million dollars, I'd make a movie about Captain Blood. Oh, would you now? He didn't get away with a stash, you know.
He got caught. It's a pretty dull ending now, isn't it? Maybe I'd rewrite the ending so that someone did get away with the crown jewel. Oh, that'd be a good one. That's better than the balmy plots you're always coming up with, Darren. Oh, yeah? Well, you just wait. One of these days, I'll sell one of those balmy plots to the people who make movies. Then I'll be rolling in the lolly. Mark my words. This way to the crown jewels, all but one of them, maybe. Aren't you worried about someone trying to steal the crown jewels, Mr. Hargreaves? We worry about it, but not too much. No thief's laid a hand on the crown jewel since Captain Blood's infamous attempt in 1671. Thomas Blood was a notorious adventurer. During his life, he tried to seize a castle, fought on both sides in the same war, tried to kidnap the Lord High Steward, and tried to steal the crown jewels of England. In April 1671, Captain Blood disguised himself as a clergyman and won the trust of the assistant keeper of the jewels. In May, the clergyman and several cronies came to see the crown jewels. When they were brought into the jewel vault, the bandits silenced the assistant keeper and began to load up their clothing with priceless treasure. Captain Blood stamped flat one of the priceless crowns and hid it under his cloak. Others pocketed a scepter, one of the royal orbs, and the famous Black Prince's ruby, among other treasures. Just then, the assistant keeper's son arrived unexpectedly. Blood and his cohorts fled, and soon many of the tower guards were in hot pursuit. The chase ended out on the tower wharf. In the struggle and confusion, several treasures were dropped, and one of the royal orbs may have ended up in the gutter. But eventually the rogues were captured and all the jewels recovered. Wow, I bet Captain Blood was thrown into a dungeon for years and years. Actually, no. The king was intrigued by Blood's boldness and asked to see him. The king pardoned Blood and in return, Captain Blood probably spied on the king's enemies. At least, he caused no more trouble. What a cool story. That king was pretty wily, turning an enemy into a helper like that. What king was that? Grab the chart of kings from your eagle eye handbook and let's see. Captain Blood stole the crown jewels in 1671, right? Check your chart of monarchs to find out who ruled England then. Charles II. I'll have to remember that. I bet there are a lot more cool stories like that about him. Let's take a look at the wax figures of movie stars. These wax figures are from a movie called Captain Blood. Hmm, sounds a lot like the plot of Romeo and Juliet.
Hey, I wonder if this is the Captain Blood that Mr. Tony was talking about. Maybe no one told him about the secret ruby after all. Wow, what a story we heard. I wonder, can it all be true? Let's see what the older Moss children have to say. Mr. Moss's oldest child, Claire Moss, lives at Oxford. I seem to remember she's a scientist of some sort. There's Claire Moss. It looks like she teaches here at Oxford. Wow, Oxford is one of the world's best universities, you know. Hello, Ms. Moss. We're, uh, some friends of your brother, Darren. American friends, I guess. I can tell by your accent. It's nice to have visitors. That Darren never comes to visit me. I guess he's busy with his friends or with the cadets. I'm busy myself with my projects. I'm trying to raise money to keep my research going. I think it's terrifically important stuff. What are you researching? Human viruses. They're the little beasties that cause everything from the common cold to AIDS. For many of them, we don't yet have a cure. What are viruses? And how do they work, Miss Moss? It's really hard to explain, but I'll try. One of the things that the human cell knows how to do is to make copies of itself. Well, viruses somehow trick the cell into making copies of the virus instead, and then they kill the cell. We know how to protect ourselves against some viruses. One day, we'll have a cure for all of them, and I hope my research will help. If I can get the money to do it, that is. Couldn't your dad maybe help you pay for the research? Oh no, it would take a very, very wealthy person to pay for my research. Many thousands of pounds. My family isn't rich like that. I dearly wish we were. Off we go to Shakespeare's birthplace. Jeff Moss is part of this troupe of actors. I wonder which one he is. Sir, I'm looking for Jeff Moss. Ah, you mean Mercutio. He doesn't seem to be here. Mercutio? You mean Jeff has changed his name? No, just that he plays Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet, the play we are putting on. Are you familiar with that play? It's a very famous one, written by William Shakespeare. Yeah, I saw it at school. There are two families who don't get along. They're always fighting. And then a woman from one family and a man from the other fall in love. He talks to her up on a balcony, but the ending is really sad. That's Romeo and Juliet in a nutshell. I play Romeo's father, Lord Montague, and Mercutio is a young friend of Romeo's. But unfortunately, he gets killed in a sword fight. So Mercutio, I mean Jeff, is off practicing his sword fighting. Here, I'll show you where he is. Now, I hope this is all in fun. It looks pretty real. Hold, Tivolt! Some young citizens of Verona beg us to put off this quarrel. Are you Jeff Moss? We're, um, friends of your brother Darren. Well, welcome to Stratford. I know it's a pretty far away from London. I just came back that way myself. Really? What were you doing in London? I was meeting with a man from America, from Hollywood. But that's all I can tell you about it. The rest is a secret. Does it have anything to do with Captain Blood? Captain Blood? Isn't that some old pirate movie? I think I did see it once on the telly. Now, 
If you'll step back, I'll try once again to defeat this villain, Tybalt. Come, sir, your Posado. Ma'am, we're friends of Jeff Moss. You're in luck. He just got back from business in London. I don't see him around. Perhaps Lord Montague knows where he is. Do you know what business Jeff had in London? Oh, the usual, I'm sure. Auditioning for another play or a movie, or maybe just looking for some steady work. It's tough being an actor. Not everyone pulls down lots of money like the big stars do in Hollywood. Let's make sure we interview all three of Mr. Moss's children. Then let's meet Aunt Miranda at the Ritz Hotel. Hey, why are Aunt Miranda and Patrick Moss hiding behind that pillar? Psst! Over here! Shh! Mr. Tony stayed here at the Ritz when he was in London. We tried to find out who came to see him here at the hotel. Was it Claire, Jeff, or Darren? But the desk clerk recognised Miranda. He told us we cannot divulge information about our customers to Snoopy reporters. He was quite rude about it, actually. Maybe you can find out who came to see Mr. Tony. You could put on some kind of disguise. Good idea, Aunt Miranda. Yes, may I help you? Presenting the star of the fabulous TV series, Kid Detective. We're here to see Mr. Tony, of course. Kid Detective? I don't believe I've ever seen such a show. Well, they don't have it on the BBC, yet. Surely Moss, our advance agent, told you we were coming. Moss? Yes, the name is vaguely familiar. Yes, someone named Moss did call for Mr. Tony yesterday. A young woman with glasses? Oh, no, no. A, a young man, very handsome and dashing. He had a sword with him, I recall. He was just one of the many actors and actresses from the old Vic Theatre who came to see Mr. Tony yesterday. I'm afraid you and your star are too late. Mr. Tony finished his business and left yesterday before dinner. Oh well, perhaps we'll catch up with him in Paris or Monte Carlo or New York. Goodbye. I think we're close to the truth about the secret of Cal Good idea! Some of these actors went to see Mr. Tony yesterday. Let's find out what was going on. And then I leapt down, just like Errol did in the movie, and roared, On guard, ye scurvy knaves! I think that's when he decided to let me star in the movie. How dramatic! I played like he was my father, and wept and carried on and sobbed. You must pardon him, father, for I am betrothed to him. Just like Olivia, he loved every minute of it. Excuse me, are you talking about your meeting with Mr. Tony? As a matter of fact, yes. Dan and I are quite certain we passed the audition. We are the new Errol and Olivia. Fame and glory, here we come. Quiet, Emma. You know this is all strictly hush-hush. That's all we can say now. No autographs, sorry. Errol? Olivia? I think I know exactly who Dan and Emma were talking about. 
Come with me to the Wax Museum. Ready. Did someone tell Mr. Tony the secret of the ruby drop of Captain Blood? Or was he talking about something else? Pick out the clues that show what happened. Now pick the person who told Mr. Tony about Captain Blood. If Mr. Tony was talking about the 1935 movie instead of the Crown Jewels thief, pick the movie actor Errol Flynn. You got it! No one squealed the family secret to Mr. Tony. The Captain Blood he was talking about was the 1935 movie, not the man who tried to steal the Crown Jewels over 300 years ago. The real problem in this case, we had to know what the mysterious Mr. Tony meant by Captain Blood. At first it seemed he was talking about Captain Thomas Blood, the bold thief of the Crown Jewels. To suddenly make a movie about Thomas Blood just after Mr. Moss told his children the family secret about him seemed to be too much of a coincidence. But then we learned that there was another Captain Blood, a 1935 smash hit movie that starred two unknown actors, Olivia de Havilland and Errol Flynn. When we interviewed some actors who had seen Mr. Tony while he was in London, we heard them say they were going to be the next Errol and Olivia. That proved that Mr. Tony was actually talking about the movie Captain Blood. He was auditioning young actors and actresses for a remake of the classic 1935 movie, which had nothing to do with the secret of the ruby drop of Captain Blood. Thank you.